Good morning and a very warm welcome to our online service today. It's really good that you can join us wherever you are, however many times you've worshipped with us. We are God's family scattered across this parish, across even the nation, maybe even the world. People are joining us from everywhere and it's lovely to be able to worship God together. So how are you all doing today? I hope uh, you're all well. I hope you're feeling the joys of spring and some of the optimism that. Uh, going around. As I'm here in this church, I can hear birdsong around. In fact, not just from outside the church, I'm being joined by one of God's creatures here in this building uh, this morning as well. So as we come before God together, we recognise we are many people with many different lives, but gathered to worship one God. So we begin with this opening greeting. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. And so let us recognise his presence with us wherever we are. We just have a moment of silence. And so as God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. And so with many tongues across many homes, we're going to worship God as we sing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. A lovely way to begin our service, that wonderful hymn of praise to God. Now, as you know, if you've been with us over the last few weeks, we've been going through the theme of spiritual essentials for real life. We've been covering in our Lent course in our Connect groups as well. We've been looking at different objects. The first week we had a compass, then we looked at bread for nourishment, 
We looked at light last week. Steve showed us his tent, thinking about shelter. And this final week of our Lent course, we're thinking about water, which brings refreshment. There's nothing better, is there, when you're really thirsty than good cold glass of water. We all know that water is essential for life. When spaceships go travelling to far-flung planets in our solar system, one of the first things they look for is any signs of water, just to see if there may be life somewhere in the solar system of whatever form it takes. We also know that water brings refreshment. It revives us. And so we're going to now watch a couple of uh, videos. Uh, these videos are of animals enjoying water. So enjoy these. One, two, one, two, three. Well, we get along. Yeah, we really do. And there's nothing wrong. Who are the a little bit of fun, weren't they? You'll notice that our, our dog Barley has got a little bit uh, shaggy during lockdown. I think like many of us, he could do with a, a bit of a, a trim. So as we introduce that theme of water bringing refreshment, we come before God now in a time of confession, knowing that actually that's one way he can bring refreshment to our souls through acknowledging our guilt and asking him to forgive us. So let's just have a moment of silence as I lead us in this Kyrie confession. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The good news is that God forgives us. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this, this fifth Sunday of Lent. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been listening to different people from our parish sharing stories of uh, how they've come to faith and what their everyday faith means for them. And so this morning, we've got Alan Taylor from St Peter's sharing us something of his life of faith. Enjoy. Good morning. I'm Alan, a member of St Peter's Congregation for about seven years, currently the treasurer for the parish as well as serving on the PCC. I was christened at another St Peter's church when I was just a baby in arms, and I considered myself Christian, attending Sunday school 
and with regular morning assemblies and religious instruction at school. My faith did wane as I matured. Uh, I became a bit agnostic. Um, I was seeking answers from alternate religions, including the old pre-Christian religion of paganism, from which comes the traditions of the Yule Log and St Easter for Easter, uh, as well as Wicca. I moved to Perford in 1999 and Jane, my partner of almost 25 years, was a regular at St Peter's and occasionally I went with her. Over a couple of the years I became regular and Jane has been my guiding light, shining brightly and leading me to regain my faith and the consummate understanding that there is only one true God with the Holy Spirit and the Son of God, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, um, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I asked Jonathan if he could confirm my faith and I learnt so much from the pre-confirmation course and confirmed in 2016. A later Alpha course gave all the proof anyone would ever need that our Lord is supreme, loving, caring and creator of everything. He alone created something out of nothing, the universe. Having renewed faith helps me to be an optimist rather than a pessimist and more positive with life and at work. If I have any concerns about work, play or health, I know that help is but a prayer away to our Father. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Alan, so much. It's great to hear what God has done in your life, particularly in recent years here at St Peter's, and how he continues to play that important part in your life. So I'd like to encourage all of us here actually listening, watching today, to see whether you would like to share something of how God is at work in, in your life today. And uh, would love it to hear your stories. They resonate with each person who watches. So if you're feeling brave enough, courageous enough, and uh, would love you to do so, then please do contact me or Sam and just say that you'd like to do a little video for this slot and we'll contact you and get you involved. If you don't come forward, then we will be asking one or two of you to do so. And if we do ask you, then please do be courageous and come forward. It's really important that we talk of our faith, that we encourage one another with what God is doing today. In a moment, we're going to sing our next song, Every Move I Make. And that's a song if you want to, to get up and uh, dance along to, clap your hands. And then after that, uh, we have our two Bible readings, Caroline Harvey from St. Peter's is going to read to us from Isaiah. And then we're going to have a video of our main reading from John chapter 4 with uh, Jesus meeting the Samaritan at the well. And then after that, Rachel Johnson is going to be bringing us God's word as she reflects on living water. But now let's praise God as we sing every move I make.
The reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 1 to 5. But now listen, O Jacob, my servant Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says, He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring, and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. One will say, I belong to the Lord. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Still another will write on his hand, The Lord's, and will take the name Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So when Jesus heard what was being said, he left Judea and went back to Galilee. On his way there, he had to go through Samaria. In Samaria, he came to a town named Sychar, which was not far from the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by the trip, sat down by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw some water. Give me a drink of water. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. So how can you ask me for a drink? Jews will not use the same cups and bowls that Samaritans use. If you only knew what God gives, and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him. And he would give you a life-giving water. Sir, you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. Where would you get that life-giving water? It was our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well. He and his children and his flocks all drank from it. You don't claim to be greater than Jacob, do you? Those who drink this water will get thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I will give them will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring, which will provide them with life-giving water and give them eternal life. Sir, give me that water. Then I will never be thirsty again. Nor will I have to come here to draw water. Go and call your husband and come back. I don't have a husband. You are right when you say you don't have a husband. You've been married to five men and the man you live with now is not really your husband. You have told me the truth. I see you are a prophet, sir. My Samaritan ancestors worshipped God on this mountain. But you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where we should worship God. Believe me, woman. The time will come when people will not worship the Father either on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not really know whom you worship. But we Jews know whom we worship because it is from the Jews that salvation comes. But the time is coming. And is already here when by the power of God's Spirit people will worship the Father as he really is offering him the true worship that he wants God is spirit and only by the power of his spirit can people worship him as he really is I know that the Messiah will come and when he comes he will tell us everything I am he, I who am talking with you. At that moment, Jesus' disciples returned, and they were greatly surprised to find him talking with a woman. But none of them said to her, what do you want? Or asked him, why are you talking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the town. and see the 
man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he what? be the Messiah? What? So they left the town and went to Jesus. In the meantime, the Good morning. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning thirsty for you. As we listen to your word, may it become in us a spring of living water welling up to eternal life. Amen. Have you ever been on a long, hot journey and run out of water? Can you remember what it felt like? Our anonymous Samaritan woman knows the feeling well. Trudging along on sweaty, sticky, swollen feet, her tongue sticking to the roof of her mouth, throat so dry she can't even remember the taste of cold water, the feel of it on her face, the pleasure of washing off the dust clinging to her skin. The dust of five. What? Five husbands who died? Five periods of mourning? Or five husbands who divorced her when her charms wore off? The dust of the whispers. What did she do to them? No smoke without fire. Wouldn't trust her around my husband. The dust of her fear and exhaustion and desperation, weighing her down, drying up what little hope remained. So she seeks refreshment in a stagnant puddle, in the protection of another man. Until the heat of the sun becomes more bearable than the heat of the gossip. And so she heads out at midday to fetch water to quench the thirst that never quite leaves her. The bowl should be empty of people now, but there's a man sitting on it. A Jewish man, here in Samaria. Why would he have chosen to travel this way into a nation of unclean half-breeds? No matter, she carries on walking to the well, knowing that he'll move away. A man doesn't talk to a woman in public. And a Jew doesn't talk to a Samaritan. He'll move away. Except he doesn't move away. And he doesn't stay silent. Give me a drink, he says. Give me a drink? How can he ask her for a drink from her unclean bucket? Perhaps this is a clue that this man who I pen social conventions is going to turn her life upside down. Perhaps this is the first step to restoring her self-worth, asking her to meet his need for refreshment. But he has something she needs too. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water. Just the sound of the words is refreshing. A God-given spring bubbling and gushing and overflowing the way it is before it's boxed in by man-made wells. Lights playing on the surface of the water. Children laughing and splashing, dangling their feet in its coolness. A stream rippling over stones, bringing life to the poplar trees on its banks, inviting you to stop and rest in its tranquility to take a break from the toil of the day, to stoop down and quench your thirst. Sir, how can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well? If you drink the water I give you, you'll never be thirsty again. In fact, I will make in you a spring of water, bringing you eternal life. Never thirsty again. Wouldn't that be incredible? To be spared this daily trudge to collect water, to be spared having to measure every drop. Water, water everywhere. And plenty for her to drink. What a precious gift offered to her. And he, Jesus, knows who she is. He knows what she's done. And yet he thinks she's worthy of such a gift. So give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. A miraculous supply of water. It's not unheard of. She might think back to Moses, who led God's grumbling people through the desert and struck the rock at Horeb to get water for them to drink. 
She might remember Ezekiel's vision of the river flowing from the temple and bringing new life to the Dead Sea. Or she might recall Isaiah prophesying, I will pour water on the thirsty land. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. And now Jesus is pouring out the living water of the Holy Spirit, inviting her to step out of her daily toil and sit for a time and be refreshed. As they talk together, his words like a fresh shower of rain, the kind of rain that smells of fresh grass and fertile soil, the kind of rain that makes you lift your face and catch the drops on your tongue, the kind of rain you want to dance in, the kind of rain that revives your body and soul just as it revives the dry ground. Why drink from the stagnant ponds of wealth or achievement or unhealthy relationships? When you can drink the living water of divine love, divine hope, divine strength and purpose. Living water that satisfies your soul and allows you to flourish even to eternal life. Living water bubbles and overflows. It can't be contained or restrained or dammed. And so it bubbles and overflows from the woman as she rushes back to share it with her neighbours, inviting them to join her good news. Come and see, could this be the Messiah? I wonder what's next for those neighbours. Which of them will come to say, I belong to the Lord? I wonder what's next for the woman as Jesus continues with his journey and she returns home. What will she do with this gift of living water? What will you do with the gift of living water Jesus offers to you? Well, first of all, if you haven't asked for it, then do. Why wouldn't you want something that refreshes and revives you? And once you've asked for it, then use it and enjoy it. Just as Jacob builds a well to access the spring more easily, you can build wells to access the living water within you. Your well might be reading a psalm or singing a song of praise. It might be enjoying a beautiful sunrise. It might be meditating on a single Bible verse. But just give yourself 10 minutes respite from the toil of the day, 10 minutes to rest in God's presence and refresh your soul. Just as the Samaritan woman was refreshed by that encounter at Jacob's well. And whatever kind of well you build, build lightly so the well doesn't become more important than the water. And visit often to drink the only thing that can truly satisfy your thirst and bring life to your soul. Living water, bubbling and gushing and overflowing in you and through you, the gift of God for all who ask. Amen. We're going to sing again now, as the deer pants for the water.
Thank you so much, Rachel. We do all need that living water every day, don't we, to revive us, to refresh us, to keep us going, especially when we're tired and spiritually thirsty. So I'd encourage all of us to take heed of Rachel's words and to drink from that well, whatever that might look like. I know God wants to pour that living water into our lives. We're now going to affirm our faith, so please respond with the words in bond. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain. For with his blood, he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our prayers of intercession this week are going to be led by Steve Green. Let's pray. Let us pray. The response to living water is, refresh us again. Living water, refresh us again. Loving God, we give you thanks for all the times that you have refreshed our lives by your compassion, mercy and grace, often when we are least deserving. As we have received abundantly from you, help us to drink freely from your kindness and be channels of your love to others we meet this week, so that your love may flow freely out through us by our words and actions. Living water, refresh us again. We pray for all those who thirst for justice, the wrongly accused and imprisoned, the victims of circumstance, prejudice and discrimination the victims of poverty and oppression. Lord, help us to work to create structures and systems in our society that are fair and compassionate. Lord, grant justice and enable us to stand up for all others in their time of need. Living water, refresh us again. As we look ahead to Tuesday in the National Day of Reflection, we stand alongside all the many millions across the world who have lost loved ones in the last year from COVID and COVID-related illness. We continue to strive for a fair and equal sharing of a vaccine to all peoples in all countries on all continents. Show us how to reach out to other people in all places with tenderness and concern so that a river of hope flows out into every heart and home and community. Living water, refresh us again. We pray for those who thirst for peace in the world. 
We pray for peace in Yemen, Syria, South Sudan and in all other areas of armed conflict. We pray for all those living in refugee camps and all those who are displaced because of conflict, disease and poverty. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world who are abused and marginalised, particularly in this time of scarcity. We pray that they will be showered with your blessings and drenched in your love. We pray for the Christian community in all the countries where there is intense persecution. May we be faithful in prayer, action and giving. Living water, refresh us again. We pray for our own nation and our national and local leaders that they may have wisdom and govern and lead in accordance with your will. We pray for our government, politicians and councillors and all others in authority over us. We pray that they would act justly, love mercy and walk humbly before you. We pray for our own church and all its leaders at diocesan, deanery and parish level. We pray that we and they may be soaked in your love and drink freely from your ocean of grace. Living water, refresh us again. We pray for all we know who need your love and refreshment at this time, remembering especially Eileen and Peter Bliss, Patrick Chapman, Enid Hardman, John Hunter, Linda Kirk, Trevor Lloyd, Catherine McCormack, Olive Park, Joy Storkey, and our mission partner Malcolm Pritchard. And in a moment's silence, we bring to you others that are especially on our heart. Bring healing and peace to them in body, mind and spirit, that they may be reinvigorated in the sure knowledge of your salvation. Living water, refresh us again. And let us say together the family prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Okay, it's time for our notices. Hopefully everybody's got a copy of uh, Notes and News. If for any reason you don't get it, then please do contact uh, the parish office to get hold of a copy also on our website. As always, lots going on, lots to read, so please do have a good read. First thing to draw attention to is this coming Tuesday, 23rd of March, is the National Day of Reflection. It's been uh, initiated by Marie Curie Charity and the Church of England is very much participating in that. It's an opportunity to reflect on this year. It's been one whole year since that first lockdown, but particularly to focus on those who have lost loved ones during this time. It's been such a difficult time to grieve, to mourn, to have funerals and so on. So we'd encourage you to stop for a minute's silence at midday to pray. We'd encourage you to light a lamp at eight o'clock, a, a candle or something, and to pray. And then also the church here at St Peter's is going to be open throughout the day from nine to six on that Tuesday. For you just to come in, pause, have a moment, silence or prayer. It's going to be a, a prayer tree where you can tie a yellow ribbon on it to remember your loved one. So please do take advantage of that and use this day to remember with gratitude. And you may want to just contact others you know who've had a difficult year, who have maybe lost a loved one, and just tell them that you're thinking of them, you're praying for them on this day. 
Only two weeks till Easter and uh, we're back in church for our Easter services next Sunday on Palm Sunday. We have services uh, across all our churches, so please do check that out in Notes and News. And then we have services on Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. Also, please do check that out. But on Easter Sunday, we are back in church in all our three churches, but we're not sure how many people will come. So we are encouraging everyone, please, to book if you're going to come to our All Age Communions on Easter Sunday in uh, All Souls, St Mark's or St Peter's. Please do book. Again, details are in Notes and News or do phone the parish office if you'd like to book in for one of those services. But it's important that you do and we hope that we'll see a good number of you to celebrate Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday, the 4th of April. And the final notice I want to mention today is about legacies. Legacies play an important part in the future of any church and also in this church. A number of people have generously left legacies over many, many decades, even centuries, no doubt, which have helped keep our churches going, looking after the beauty of them, maintaining them, maintaining the ministry of the church and the children's and families minister role is partly supported by a legacy. So we'd just like to encourage you, if you're thinking about uh, doing a will or updating your will, just to include this parish in that, to leave a legacy to the church. One day it could make a massive difference to the future ministry of this church. So just encourage you, please, to take advantage of that. Do have a good read notes and news. Contact Alan Taylor, our treasurer, who can give you a bit more information if you need that. We're going to sing our final hymn this morning. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Let's worship God as we sing this together. Well, it's been lovely that you could join us this morning for our service. I hope it has been encouraging and also refreshing for you. Really look forward to seeing you next week online or in church if you're able to join us in church. It'll be lovely to see you. But we close with these responses. Again, please respond with the words involved. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow,
draw us into your future. Amen. And so may the Father keep you in all your days. May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. God bless you. See you soon. It's Jamie.